So uh, talk about before talking about the A I A D M M, we have to mention this before. So in the before it's called A O N. Okay, next slide. It's uh it's about the augmented uh Lagrangian method. So before we have to talk about that, we have to mention a, a, a lot of skills like mathematical skills that mentioned in the paper. So the first one is primal dual method. So in the primal dual method, if it's a primal, it's a if it's a if it's the function is has a duality. So you can minimize your object function, and then you can actually in either way you can uh, solve it by uh, another method called the duality. So it can help you to solve the equation on the other way. It's called maximize the function. Okay, so the problem here is strong dual and weak dual. For a convex optimization problem, the duality gap is zero under a constraint qualification condition. So the strong dual is actually means that uh, another phrase is called the gap dual, the dual gap. If the dual gap equals to zero, then you can find a way to find the optimal solution. And it's called a strong dual. If it's a weak dual, you're going to find a local minima or local maximum. Uh, and the dual gap is not zero or greater than zero. So you will find an approximated uh, solution. Okay, next slide. So the, the duality of the convex uh, objective function. So here's the function that we are like, trying to solve. And here's the Lagrangian function. So I'll mention later and for the Lagrangian function. And the Lagrangian dual function will be asking uh, if it's like you are pursuing the minimum of the f of x. So the dual problem is maximum the g of u and b. And sub, sub, uh, subject to u and b greater equal than zero. Okay, next slide. So uh, this one is kind of important. So dual problem is always convex, and g is the constraint. It's always concave, even if primal problem is not convex. So uh, the the primal dual optimal values are f star and g star, always satisfied with weak duality. So if it's weak, du weak duality, the f of star greater or equal than g of star. But if it's strong duality, f of star equals to g of star. And for that, uh, you mentioned a Slater condition. So the Slater condition is, uh, can you put before the previous slide? Yeah. So for a solution that you pick for x, you can solve it. If you, if, if you solve it, like you, you got a, answer that is x, and then you uh, put it into the constraint function that h of i of x is not equal but less than zero, and i of j of x is equal to zero. While you have in this condition, it's not, uh, you cannot have the, for this later condition, you cannot have the h of h i of x is equal to zero. We cannot have that condition. It's a constraint for the Slater condition. It's here. So you cannot have the equal sign. If you follow with the constraint, the strong dual duality holds. So you can find an optimal solution. So it's the Slater condition. So after you're solving recursive, recursively sol solving the x. So hey, really quick. So the yes. Slater condition doesn't hold. We still have weak duality. Is that correct? Oh, uh, sorry again. So if the Slater condition doesn't hold. Do you still have weak duality? Yes. Okay. It only it only holds for the strong duality. So it doesn't hold for the weak duality. Okay. So if it satisfies, you just have to remember if this condition satisfies. You can get an optimal solution. That's the point of the Slater condition. So, given a uh, primal feasible x and the dual feasible u and b, this. Okay, I'll, I'll just don't use this. I'll, I'll just talk about it here. So, this is the answer that you are pursuing. And x star is the optimal solution. So, here you can just see the equation here, but I'll talk about later for the Lagrangian function. And the optimal solution for the different x is an x star, and between its x, 
So it's a different answer. So this one will not be optimal. It's approximated answer. And this one will be the optimal. So in here, if you satisfy the equation for here, this part, this part will be zero because it satisfies the equation here. H of F equals to zero. So this one is zero. And this one is smaller equal than zero. And however, oh, I didn't mention that. The mu is greater than equal to zero. It's the condition. So this part will be less greater than zero. And this is the optimal solution. It combines with together, it will less equal than the answer you gave. You, the answer you pick, that is, which is not optimal. So in this part, it satisfies this one. If you eliminate both f of x and then trying to figure out here, it's this condition. So the answer you pick is usually smaller, uh, smaller equal than the optimal solution. So this means like if you pick an answer, the optimal solution will be the lower bound. And you pick the answer, you're trying to reach the global minimum. But however, it's the bottom. So you're trying to reach that. So that's the that's uh, this equation I'm talking about. So since the only gap is zero, then the optimal the x is uh, primal optimal, and then yeah, this one holds for this one too. So it has a distance between the gap. It's called the duality gap. Okay. So uh, this is like we can set this to be any low value instead of like. We may always not come to the optimal solution. So we can set this to any low value. And if it is at a low enough value, we may just be like, okay, now it is close enough to the actual optimal value. So we can just stop the algorithm. So that is the meaning here. Yeah. Another question. Yeah. So uh, the things that you discussed, I don't use the DKT conditions. We'll come. Yeah, we'll continue for that. Uh, so complementary selectness condition as in this equation. So the equation that satisfies that you can use this property to solve the primal dual map, uh, the primal dual equation. So x is for the primal solution and y is for the dual solution. However, you can see that the, those like multiple with the uh, primal solution multiple with the dual equation equals to zero. This means either x of i or the dual equation, one of them must be zero. So if it has the duality, if, if the function has the, dual, the property of duality, you can use this complementary selectness condition to solve the equation. So um, if x0 and y0 are the optimal solution, and then we can conclude that, so the, the, the primal and the dual here, the c x0 equals to the b transpose uh, multiple with the y0. So let's talk about the Lagrangian function. What does it do? What does it do? Like, how does it work? So the the function that we are minimizing is the f of x, and f of x one and x two, and the constraint are the g of x, uh, g of x one and x two. So the 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 long down here is a parameter. Uh, so it helps you to it helps you to like. Converge because uh, due to the constraint here, if you find a lambda and an x1 and an x2, it's a it has a duality property. So it helps you to solve the equation. Uh, we will look at that in the next chapter, in the next slide. Oh, okay, just hold on a second. So the this uh, this property is very important. Uh, we will do it in the example to explain it. So you have to like memorize it for the partial long uh, L with the and par over partial x one equals to zero. This means like uh, the slope is equal to zero, and for the x two and for the long down also. Okay, next slide. So we are talking about the graph that we are trying to figure out here is two x plus y is the f of x. And k is the value that you are pursuing. 
is the minimum value. Minimum of k, that, that is for your solution. So x uh, squared plus y squared equals to one is the constraint. So you want to find out minimum k that satisfy, also satisfy the condition and have the minimum value. So uh, while you are doing this, you are trying to approach the constraint. So in this part, you can see that it has a approach in here and it cross over the constraint. So it satisfies the constraint. So we have a solution in both point here, two points. But in this, when you reach this point, what does it mean? It means like the derivatives of this point equals to zero because you the slope equals to zero. You reach the point. So this slope is zero. So that is what I mentioned before is partial L and partial X equals to zero. Because it reached the constraint. So it have a very a minimum solution. Okay, nice. So why there is two points? So in this kind of a situation, in, in this kind of a situation, we have two solutions. And after you find, figure out uh, the point is, you have to just figure out which one is the minimum. And then you can find the answer. So that's how it works. So the, the Grandian function, in other words, is trying to combine those constraint with the object function together in order to help you to solve the minimum. That's the Lagrangian function does. So in the own method, that you are trying to use the substitution method, trying to solve x equals to y plus something, and, and substitute it to the main function, I mean the object function, and trying to calculate all the values that you have. It takes a lot of time. So if you look, you use the Lagrangian function, you can solve it very quickly due to the, the gradient equals to zero if you're approaching the constraint. So the constraint usually form a shape, different kind of shape. It might be circle or it might be tank, rectangular or some kind of a shape. But it will help you to, when you when the function reach the point, it will have the derivatives, I mean the slope equals to zero. So the crucial Kuhn Tucker, that's, uh, I usually call that set point theorem or, or the set point condition. <laughs> it's better to read. So in this method, the uh, concave, concave, convex, and non-convex optimization theory, um, the set point condition is the necessary condition for a constrained object function to have the most optimized solution. So in here, it allows in the equality constraints, the, the KKT approaches to nonlinear programming. General, general, uh, generalize the method of Lagrangian multipliers, which allows only uh, equality constraints. So, and here you can use this method or to find, uh, or I can say, if this uh, condition is satisfied, you can find the optimal solution. If the KKT condition is satisfied. So I'll talk about the property here, the four properties. Uh, so for the section area, you can see that, so zero equals, uh, belongs to those. So it means like this equals to zero, this equals to zero, and this also equals to zero. Why? You see partial here. So it's a slope. Uh, the condition of the slope, all of the slope equals to zero. So that means that you're on the point that uh, satisfy the constraint. Okay. And next, uh, U of I, uh, multiply edge i of x equals to zero. So this is the condition here. So it equals to zero means either one is zero, right? So it might be h of i or it might be u of i. So it's primal loop because uh, if this is i equal to zero and this will be smaller than zero. So it, if it satisfies the condition all over here, in either way, in either i is equal to zero or h of i of x equal, uh, less than uh, equals to zero. And this is the condition that always be zero. So it doesn't matter. So next. 
So in this kind of a way, we got to figure out how to like, how it works to find the optimal solution. So if X star and U, U star, V star, mu star, be the primal and dual solution with zero duality gap, that I mentioned before, because when the duality gap is zero, it has the best solution, right? So uh, it minimizes here, the function here. But I have told, uh, we have solved that equation before. So um, this part will be zero, eliminated. And this part will be smaller uh, equal to than zero. So this, uh, this plus this one, smaller than the original of this one. So the equation satisfied. So what, what's going on happen, what's going to happen if it's the, the strong, strong duality holds? So um, this has been satisfied because this is an optimal solution and this has been satisfied. So f of x will equals to g of u star and v star. So g is the function that you are trying to find the answer. And f of x star is the optimal solution. So when he holds the strong duality, then it will be equal to each other. G of u and v will equal to f of x star. So yeah. So here, oh sorry. Uh, if x star and u star and v star are primo and dual solutions with zero. A duality gap, then satisfy the KKT condition, and you can have the optimal solution. So the dual ascent method, uh, I have to mention that because uh, another, the next algorithm that uh, uh, Joshua is going to introduce will use this one. Okay, the dual grad gradient descent uh, is a popular method for optimizing the object under its strength. In reinforcement learning, it helps to help us to make better decisions. So what it does is, I'll make it very brief. Like it's an object function, right? So it's a constraint that C of X, and it's a Lagrangian function. So we combine together in order to find the optimal solution, and we have uh, the dual uh, the dual function is G lambda because it's a primal dual uh, problem. So not like the scale with called the Lagrangian multiplier. Okay, nice. So how to find an optimal solution of X? Step one, you, uh, you, you are trying to fix, uh, you, you are trying to find a point that has a slope equal to zero. So a slope equals to zero, again, just meet the constraint. And then second, like you are fixing the U and V, I mean, lambda, it's the same thing because there are two functions. But if you only have one, it's just lambda. So you are fixing the U and V or lambda in order to find the minimum X. So you are just doing iteratively to find the minimum X. And if you find it, just, uh, just replace the X and find it again. And at some point, you will have the minimum uh, X. Then you go back here and trying to find the U and V. Replace the X with this equation, the whole equation, and find the U and V. Then you'll get this, the optimal solution of X, U, V. So U, V is a, a dual problem, uh, parameters. So X is the primal problem. Okay, and here, so this is the optimal solution here. So at first, you fix the U and V and trying to find some point that slowly equals to zero and approaching to each point. So you will be doing like this, like this, like this, and approaching the minimum point. So after that, you reach the minimum point and then you can just go back to calculate the U and V. So to talk about a penalty function as one of the way to help computer uh, it's not a really a line in the graph or a really uh, 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 an, an area or some kind of formulation, but it helps computer to uh, find the right direction to do the convergence. 
So what it does? It does like this one. Okay, the line is over here. If it's going this way, the penalty function, which is here, the sigma k uh, here, will be the sigma k will be greater, and well, this function will be larger due to the sigma k will uh, just increase greater. And for this kind of slope, uh, this kind of line, uh, when you come, when you like uh, going away from the constraint, you will like uh, having a, a greater function. And this also tells the computer that you are going to the wrong direction. So when it goes in the right direction, approaching the constraint, here, the sigma k will get smaller and so on, smaller. And eventually, when you meet the point, and here, and the sigma k will equal to zero, then you can find, like, is the right direction. The computer will understand, oh, this is the right, uh, right direction. So combined with the penalty method, it will help you to calculate. More, uh, more uh, in a more sense of way, uh, in a sense of way that you can go through, go to the right direction, not the wrong direction. Okay. So the all of the method that I've mentioned before combines with each other is the method that is called an augmented Lagrangian method. So this method is to combine the penalty function with the f of x. And the constraint penalty function. So what is what is called an augmentation is this is the penalty function, and this one will be the uh, constraint, and this one will be the objective function. So combined with each other, we form a new method called augmented Lagrangian method. And this, by doing this, when you calculate lambda and x, it recursively to like uh, have the x value and calculate for the next lambda i. And for the next lambda i, it will ask that if it's smaller than the previous x. So it update the x and lambda at the same time, just recursively in order to find the minimum value of x. So that's the augmentation of a function. 